I'm so happy today to be here with my ex-student of quite a few years ago now, um, who is now head of strings at, at the Suk Myung University in Seoul, Korea. Ever since she was my student, we discussed uh, violin playing. I thought it would be a good idea to pass on some of the questions that she would have as, a, as, as a, an important teacher. What, what do you think the most important thing that we were working on, which is uh, everything developed from this, from the fifth, what do you think is the most important thing? I think um, the most important thing is the position of the elbow. Um, as uh, position of the elbow for the shifting the, yes. from the first position to higher position yes. shouldn't move so much and the position of the thumb as well and these ingredients particularly with the arm the straight arm and and the connection with the thumb i know that the great violinists of my generation and before my generation that they all had this connection with with this thumb they all had this in common and they all had this wrist action this way instead of first position second position third position etc it was that it's the natural fall of the hand i think that that Xiang is absolutely right and what she's talking about really is now this because i'm playing this fifth those fingers are now aligned they're in line yes yeah and also in line with these two strings is this elbow. If you, because my fiddle is slanting this way, that is actually square to, to this. If I put the elbow there, it's at an insanely bad position because the fingers are now going on not as they should with some flesh involved. For example, a very important exercise which I do daily is I play a fifth and an octave, followed by an octave. And in actual fact, if, if I come this way, so my hand is, is fairly normal now, that's how, how it would be in a fist. So I'm putting that, the, the hand here, and I'm playing a fifth with the octave, right? This is what we worked out. Yes. Now I can't wander outside of this vibrato with this fifth. I can't do that. I can't do this with the fifth. Next most important thing is the octave. So this elbow now has stayed, even though I've moved up the violin, this elbow has stayed more or less in the same position to the violin angle-wise as it would in first position. Which makes the octave easy. And now because this finger, which is favoring the lower strain, string but I can feel as as can a ten-year-old child feel you can feel the fifth underneath you don't have to go in the middle of the two strings you just place the fifth finger on the string and if the fifth is out you're out of tune
I don't need to move it for this. I don't need to move it for this. So I already have the, the arm and hand position for I have already, I don't have to start moving the hand around. Yes. And all four fingers are on They're more or less in line yeah, because in line. of this. Yes. And I think that we do this naturally because that, that's, that, that's comfortable. We take the fiddle out of the case, we take it out and that's it. We play like that. And it's actually closer to being correct than, than all of this stuff. Did look at this. How can you place your fingers? So it is a connection. What is the position for the elbow when you're crossing the string? When, when you cross the string, uh, this, is, this is the most important, important ingredient that the elbow has in this whole technique. Mm -hmm. If that's how long, if that's how you know, obviously notice that I'm playing D string and A string at the moment. Because it's a natural position for the arm, yeah? yes? So if I take the fifth away and I move it to the A string, I'm going to take that percentage of finger to the A string now and now I can feel the F on the E string underneath. But there is a difference and the, with the elbow. The elbow has got four positions because we have four strings. Yes. It has the position of the E string, mm -hmm. A string, D string, and G string. Strangely enough, the lower string is the most difficult one. Yes. And logically, it should be the easiest one, because for the G string, the arm moves from here to here. Yes. But then, you, you finish, more or less. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you can reach it's almost the entire length. Yes. So now we come to the D string, we can almost move, it's a little bit different, yes. A string, straight. I have found, for me, and this is a very individual thing, for me, the E string, I'm a, even a little bit in that way. Yes, outside. Outside, yeah, yes. outside the fiddle. Yes. The thumb is helping me do these things. Yes. And I, I as just... If, as if you have another D string. Yes, and I, I, th I think, I mean, logically, one... If, if, the, if this is the, the, the correct and easy way to play, which I believe it is, then I think, I think that um, we should be able to play in slow motion, um, perhaps, I don't know, the whole of the Sibelius Concerto in this. So I'm going to practice my vibrato and I'm going to practice my bowing. Bowing is something I've never discussed in a situation like this, mm -hmm. but this is, that comes next, because I have a very strong thoughts about that too. I mean, I could arguably go through the, the, the I would have to work at that, but I could go through the whole concerto this way. That's Same right. with Mendelssohn. And by the time you finish, you're very familiar. Mm -hmm. The arm is very familiar with all the, all the different uh, positions. Position of the wrist. Position of the wrist. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the position of the wrist, because I don't... Again, this is all in, in its infancy for a lot of people, not for me, because I was working with this thing for so long. But this idea that the, here is first position, here is second position, here is third position, here is fourth position, here is fifth position, here, this is all too complicated. And it's actually taking the, because in actual fact, the natural fall of the hand is this way and this way, this way and this way. So, in actual fact, in the lower positions, ideally the wrist has got to be soft. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily in, but it has to be in for thirds to align the fingers. But, in, by the time we get to third position, the wrist is going this way, as you can see with all the great violinists. Yes. 
the wrist is going that way yes. and the thumb is going with it. Yes. It's not being left alone down there. Not like that. Not like that. No. Very so, beautiful place like this. Well, if, if you think, I mean, if you think that this is a position and you're going to use that the whole time mm -hmm. as opposed to that, which is the most natural? Yes. Of course, there is, we have to deal with this at yes. some point. But it kind of does it by itself, that. It deals with the ribs by itself. Yes. Um, you always play fifth scale with vibrato. Yes, always. Do you know why? I mean, can I ask why? Yes. It's because, it's because I believe that you, that that actually, that actually solidifies mm -hmm. the action of the fifth. So if I play, for example, a fifth with a sixth, so I'm vibrating through those notes. And if I was playing perhaps something, I don't know, and I was not aware of this, I'm going to stop every time the finger goes down. Like a little bit like a piano stop, the, note, the sound stops. But if I use the same technique when I play, all the time and singing and, the, uh, and singing yeah. you told me yesterday I have to keep my third finger and fourth finger and, to, and to the finger bowl very yeah, hard you must feel the finger bowl so why is that? because if we feel only the string we, we will not actually explore the possibilities of color in the string because the, the, if we feel the fingerboard, we can, it's like, like touching a table. So, you, so you, can, you can touch the table light or hard or press or whatever. And there are the dynamics. Because I, well you know, I believe that in the bow, I don't think there exists color. I think all the color is in the left hand. And our individual sound out. Let's let's talk about the people that we do recognize, the people like Mendel, Perlman, Sherry, Oistra, all of those people. The sound that you hear, of course the bow is your voice, and you know if you have a couple of hundred years spare, you might learn something about that. But in actual fact, if I play as if I play, let me play an easy note. Now, what happens at the end of Zigan? 
in the G Street. Where is the centre now? There is the centre. So it's all feel. And that's why this feel of textures is almost in, impossible to explore. Almost impossible, because it's like saying, you know, Rembrandt used a, a thicker brush of that or a thinner brush. It's, we have got everything to do with opening the centre. But, what colours can I make with the bow? Let's say Tchaikovsky. chamber music one night, I mean she was a friend of ours all our, our lives until, you know, it, she was a, but I once asked her, I said, Jackie, that's the best string sound I've ever heard. I said, where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? And she went and she put her bow down and she said, it's coming from here. It's coming from here. Fingerboard. Yeah, now I never understood what she meant by but in actual fact, she's talking about, she was talking, now I know, she's talking, was talking about the dynamics in the finger. Uh -huh. Because this, the instrument, this is the violin hand, this is the bow hand. So the fiddle, she could feel, she could feel all the colors and she could feel all the dynamics. Mm -hmm. The textures were wonderful, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, without that, there's no sound. I always remember that, I couldn't quite work it out. As the years went by, I began to realize that she's talking about dynamics and emotion. It's coming from those fingers. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. True, True story. Mm -hmm. So sounds coming from bow and also fingerboard. The feeling of well, the colors are your heart is coming actually from heart, there. Heart, yes. Heart. Yeah. One could almost say your, 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 your blood is coming from there. Yeah. <laughs> it's going even further back. That was how she played. Mm -hmm. what, what 
across the old film. When she, when she did a slide, you could feel the thing was wrong. You could feel her dealing with this thing wrong. I bet she could have played Pascal's defense. <laughs> Thing that we should be doing now is is making this thing 